Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome to episode 10 of Network Chat Programming. So today we're going to talk about um, primarily a scroll pane, okay? And I know that we're spending a lot of time on this GUI, GUI stuff, but I mean, it's kind of important. And also, um, let me just put in our basic detail, details here. It's important and also it just, it just needs to be covered. And I've never done a GUI kind of series before. So um, application development, this is going to be like the series that covers that, I guess, because you can see we're doing a lot of stuff here. I'm typing text here. And I've typed in a lot of constructive text, um, right? And so when I kind of start exceeding, and you can see here, when um when this kind of starts to get exceeded, and I start typing more stuff in, it, it kind of just pushes everything down. And that's not good, okay? There's no way for us to scroll through this. We want to make a window kind of like this, right? That we can scroll through, just like that. Um, so that's what we're going we're gonna to talk about today. And then hopefully next time, next episode, we'll actually be able to move on to the, the client server kind of stuff. Okay. Um, hopefully. So, um, unless there's something, there's probably something else that comes up for GUI because I am doing this kind of live. So hopefully not though. Hopefully everything will be good. Um, so we have a text area called text history. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big, I'm, I'm just not a big fan of how, um, uh, window builder names things like we have this txt i history yeah like it's just not i don't know it's just not very cool so what i want to do is i'm going to refactor that and what that means is i'm going to basically rename it so i'm going to rename it everywhere so instead of it being called text i history i'm just going to take i'm just going to um basically change it into history right i'm going to rename it to history because where else um are we going to use history nowhere right it's just going to be a text area so i'm going to right click here and go uh, um, refactor, which is right over here, and then rename. And I'm gonna just basically just type here what, what I want the new name to be, which is history. Hit enter and you're done, okay? Really, really simple, okay? And uh, effective, as you can see. Um, now, let's see here. What else is going down? Um, we made insets, which is good. Uh, I think, yeah, okay, we'll just do the pain now. So to make a uh, scroll pane, right? What we need to do here is uh, basically just create an object out of it, of course, first. So J scroll pane, whoops. J scroll pane. We'll call it a. We'll call it scroll. Um, equals uh, new J scroll pane. And of course, the parameter will be our little history text area, just like that. Okay. We'll have to import that as well, of course. But that's a pretty standard procedure. I'm sure you guys are, are used to that. Um, and what we have to do next is kind of set the bounds of what we want our scroll pane to be. Now, this is a, uh, like, I mean, hmm, I'm just thinking like, it, it's not, uh, what, what we're doing here is, we're, we're, it's actually really cool. What we're doing here is essentially we're just saying, okay, we're kind of, it's almost like a canvas in a window. Okay. Cause you, you guys are used to game programming. Um, you know, we set the size of the canvas, blah, blah, blah. And then we just pop it inside, inside of the window. This is kind of what we're doing. Okay. We're kind of doing the, the, uh, the text area stuff. And then we're, pu we're putting it into a scroll thing. And that's, that scroll pane is what gets rendered. So instead of adding history here, what we're actually doing, or what we should be doing is something completely different. We should actually just be adding this scroll pane. Okay. Now this changes a lot of things, namely these grid bag constraints. What they should be, I don't know how I made that character. <laughs> what it should be, and if I just go Command Shift R, no, that's not it. Is it Alt Shift R? Okay, I don't know what it is on Mac. I don't know what the uh, shortcut is for refactoring, but let's refactor it again. Rename. Oh, okay, it's Control Command R. Wait, or Option Command R. Anyway, um, we'll call this uh, we'll call this sc uh, scroll constraints, I guess. Okay, so we completely changed that, and um, instead of us over here, basically. Um, well, yeah, that's what we've done, right? And you, you can notice over here that it's the same parameters as it was before, right? And we don't have to like set bounds or anything. We, we could set bounds, of course, but we kind of done that already because we, um, we're, we're giving it like a grid coordinate, but you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what this looks like, just see what it looks like. But what we've done here is we've actually just put this text area inside of a, a scroll pane. Okay. And of course we've done that by, uh, calling the constructor with the text area as a parameter. So let's just run this and see what happens. So, um, you know, local host 8192 standard procedure here, hit login. And you can see, first of all, that it's worked. 
straight away. You can see that we do see our, um, our actual window here, our text area. Now, one thing that's cool about this, and one the one that I guess, I guess the reason that really you know you can see why it works is because nowhere do we actually call this history, right? If you actually just mouse over history and you click on it, you can see all the uh, all the uses of it here. It's never actually added into our into our J panel, right? Into our content pane here. It's never actually added into it. All we've done is we've added it to a scroll pane, and that scroll pane seems to be rendering. So let's test out our uh, you know our awesome stuff here. <laughs> Whoops, that's my keyboard. Get rid of the uh, elimination there. And as you can see, awesomely enough, it scrolls now. And there's a there's a nice little scroll bar here, which actually will be, will, which is platform independent. So in other words, it'll actually match um, the style of your platform because we are setting the UI manager here to be our get system look and feel class name. Um, and you can see what we've done here is an awesome little and make sure it's focused awesome little thing uh that's called a uh scroll pane now one thing that you can notice right away is it doesn't actually scroll now okay because if i click over here or whatever and you know do stuff and then type back here it does scroll but occasionally it won't um the way that i, li I like to do that is I guess to always update the uh, the carrot. So it's one thing that we should really be doing. So um, if I come over here into uh, just just over here, I think I'll just make a carrot, okay? And not a carrot as in you know carrot that you eat. So <laughs> that's bad. Uh, so private uh, default carrot. Um, and I'll explain what this is in case you guys don't know. And let's import that. Right. Hopefully this works in um. Mac, actually, I've never tested this before on Mac. Probably will. Uh, okay, cool. So, what a carrot is, is this little blinky thing that tells us where we're typing. So, if we actually set it equal to uh, to this text area, which we've called history, dot get carrot, right? Um, and we'll actually have to cast that to a default carrot because I think it just returns a carrot. Yeah, it does. Okay, so default, whoops, default carrot right um, so we've cast it here and now the beauty the, the beauty of the thing that we can do now is we've actually just gotten the carrot that we get from the history so it's not visible right because if we launch this little this little baby here um, you can see that uh, once I put in all those details we should probably make some default details uh, while we're developing this we can't see where we're currently typing here um, we can over here you can see in the uh, in the text field, that's because we've set it. We've I guess we've enabled it for editing. Uh, this is read only, so we can't see it blinking, but it is still there. And the, the location of where it is is what determines um, I guess what uh, like you know how we scroll. Because if I go down here, you know we'll scroll. Let's scroll back up. You can see it just keeps going. It doesn't actually update. This thing, this scroll is getting longer, but it's not actually updating. And you can see right now it's not either because the carrot stays here. We've clicked, we've kind of like clicked and we put the carrot over here. So of course, when we update, it's not gonna move the carrot. Now, if we were to do something like carrot.setUpdatePolicy, right, to default carrot dot always, help me out here. I spelled default wrong, that's embarrassing. Dot always update, yeah? Then it's always gonna update. Okay, and it's always going to go to the position where the text last appeared. So again, if I do type in our details here, and I do our stuff, blah, 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 we'll just get down so we can see how that kind of works here. And what I'll do then is I'll scroll up and I'll click over here and then I'll do this again. You can see that it uh, doesn't actually update. Now that was not what it was supposed to do. Um, it might be, I'm not sure if this is a, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a platform dependent Thing. Um, hmm. Right. I should probably investigate this a bit further. But um, hmm, that's interesting. You know what? Let's try moving this carrot code uh, beneath this scroll, just because I think it adds it here. It might not work. I don't think this will work, but we could, uh, we could try it out because it, I'm pretty sure this works on Windows, just from memory. Um, maybe uh, maybe Mac is a bit less sophisticated. We'll see. So we'll type in our code, of course. Oh, well, not, not our code. I'll just our random text here. 
and uh, and then we'll scroll up, we'll click somewhere, and then we'll see if that updates. Okay, it's it's not. Um, luckily though, there is one more technique. I know it's it's probably not as clean, but it does work. Um, and we'll see if it even works on. Uh, <laughs> see if it even works on um on on Mac. But the thing is, the other technique that we could use here, uh, again from memory, is if if we do log in, every time we type some something and we hit send, what it's doing is it's actually running our uh, our send uh, method here, right? And the other thing, the other detail that we have is really on, only what you know it should only scroll whenever it receives like a new message. So when it receives a new message or when it actually, when something gets printed into this console, that's when it should, uh, you know, reset the carrot position. I could type out my tutorials now. So that being said, what we could do is simply say that when we do do this, right, let's actually um, grab our little text area, which is called history. And, and what we can do here is we can actually just simply set the carrot position to be, um, Let's see, if we get the length uh, of the thing, and I think we have to get the document first, yep, dot get length, there it is. Um, that should set, that should actually set our carrot position to be at the end, so let's try that out, okay? Again, no guarantees, I don't know if this will work on Mac, or I don't, it, should be, it should even be working uh, normally, but we'll see. So, um, I'm surprised that the first method didn't work. Uh, let's scroll this stuff. You know, see what that looks like. And let's go up here, click somewhere, and let's see what that works. Okay, that does work, yeah? You can see if we go up to the top, we click somewhere up here, we say something, it immediately sna snaps to the bottom. Now that's, um, yeah, so it's, it, it is quite weird that this technique doesn't work on window, on our Mac, this uh, carrot, default carrot. I might have done something wrong, I don't think so, that looks pretty right to me. Um, so it is, it is uh, that, that, that remains a mystery. If anyone knows why, maybe you can let me know. Um, again, I am primarily a Windows developer, but the point is, um, oh, hang on a minute. We shouldn't do this here, okay? This is a quick thing. This is send, okay? The send thing is really what happens uh, when um when we when we send things. So in other words, it won't work for receiving. Well, well, it will, but we'll have to type the same code twice. So let's actually just move this one line of code down into console because that's really what's appending it to the uh, to the thing. So again, if we just verify that that does work, which it will, um, by logging in here and uh, doing this stuff as usual. Come on. Okay, scroll up, whoops, scroll up, click somewhere. Okay, it does work. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up episode 10 of Network Chat Programming. If I do look at this little chat application that we've made, which is a uh, pretty damn awesome, if I, if I do say myself, um, I think the resizing, the resizing needs a bit of work. Yeah, there's a big uh, gap here. We'll probably just uh, do that. I don't know. In one of the episodes, we're not going to focus on resizing. That that's more of an aesthetic thing. We'll do that later. Uh, it it is just a quick fix. You just have to play around with the uh, grid pad constraints. In fact, quickly, just just now, one thing that's uh, interesting is um, let's say this. Uh, so this grid X and Y. What if we set these two to zero? Let's uh, let's just see what that looks like. Um, and also, I think we haven't set any weights before. Oh, we haven't covered weighting, have we? Have we? Because that that could be another episode. Hmm, I'm not sure if I. Okay, that ruins everything. Yes. Okay. Uh, have we covered weights? No, we haven't. Okay, we need to talk about weights and how they work with the grid back layout. So we'll do that in the next episode of Network Chat Programming. Thanks for watching, guys. If you did go on to enjoy the video, well, if you did enjoy it, um, <laughs> please hit the like button. Again, 200 likes, one video per day, 300 likes, two videos per day. And I, I will see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.